high-end sports car, faster than a Ferrari, faster than a Lamborghini. Nothing compared to this. Zero to 16, 3.7 seconds. It's fun from the moment you turn on the key. It's like being shot out of a slingshot. Any place I'd go, they put it in front. They'd move the Ferrari out and put the Roadster in front of the restaurant. What's that car in space? It's a Tesla Roadster. The first time I hit the accelerator pedal, I couldn't tell if I was in the future or the past. This is the car that made the dream happen. The technology has reinvigorated the automobile industry. Tesla sort of slowly lost the memory of these cars. Tesla didn't keep their word when it came to the quality of service. The roadster owners were abandoned. A lot of them sold their cars because they just couldn't get service. I don't know a single roadster owner who takes their roadster to Tesla, the company that made the damn car, to service it. Welcome to Medlock & Sons. I'm Carl Medlock, and this is our Tesla Roadster repair shop. My dad and I worked at Tesla early on. He worked in the service side, I worked on the parts side. Carl is known in the industry as being, you know, sort of the godfather of roadsters. He truly is an answer to so many people's prayers. It's better for the community that we just get these cars back on the road. One for Carl, I don't know if these cars would be salvageable because no one would be around to maintain them. But instead, they're out on the road and they're still running and they're still showing people, you know, this is where it all began. The Tesla Roadster came out in 2008. 2,500 were made total. You didn't really have to say anything to sell one of these cars. You just had to go take somebody for a ride. Nice truck. The Roadster, in terms of electric vehicles, is the turning point in viability for the industry. It's the proof of concept that a car could be sexy and fast and electric. First electric cars, let's face it, looked like smart cars that were goofy and, and they were still expensive. I think he thought, all right, you know, if it's gonna be expensive, let's make it expensive, but let's make it look cool. It's based on a Lotus car. You had a technology team trying to put an electric drivetrain in an existing chassis. It just seemed like a one-off, kind of modified, hot-rodded version of something and, and no one ever imagined that it would be what Tesla has become today. I bought my Roadster new in 2009. Back then, Tesla wasn't a thing. Like, no one had ever heard of Tesla. The big dare was, I dare you to buy a Tesla and an equivalent number of stock in Tesla. If you really believe in the company, do both. I mean, I bought my car when Tesla stock was selling for like $22 a share. I had no idea who Tesla was. Electric car, ha <laughs> click. <laughs> no thanks. None of us really believed in this company. We believed in the technology. It was hard not to recognize that this is where the future was going, and it was hard not to get excited about that. If you look at the client list of Tesla Roadsters, they were the who's who of the world. The Google founders bought them, and the first few hundred of these were in parking lots at Microsoft and Google and Facebook. This car used to belong to the Leaf Council of Microsoft. That was one of the original Microsoft 11 cars. The yellow car here belonged to one of the guys who helped create the iPad. The blue one here belonged to Sam Simon, the co-founder of The Simpsons TV show. This orange one here belonged to David Vascovich, ex-CTO of Microsoft. If you ever watched the TV show Bewitched, this car belongs to Tabitha. Her name is Erin Murphy. The group of Tesla owners, especially the Roadster owners, it's a fraternity of sorts. We're not just here to own a car, we're here to support Tesla, support the EV movement. They really have a passion for not just the cars themselves, but the other owners. It's kind of a big family almost. I've been a part of the Tesla community for probably seven, seven, eight years. Other Tesla owners were always open to talking, helping. It's like we're a part of a movement. The Roadster community is like taking that and 10Xing it. I was in on the original order. That was uh, back in 2007. It took 
22 months before my uh, Roadster 282 was delivered, one of the first 10 or so Roadsters that were in the area. We all even came to each other's deliveries. I drive it a lot. And as far as I know, it's the highest mileage Roadster in, in the United States. It's got 172,799 miles. It's uh, VIN number 687, and its sister car, VIN number 686, is currently on its own orbit around the sun. In the early days, we had this expression we call Tesla time. Whenever you went someplace, you had to add some Tesla time because there were going to be people there asking questions. Right. When you buy a car like this, you have to expect to talk to strangers in parking lots. It just, it's just part of the experience. We spent a lot of time educating the public about Teslas and Roadsters in particular. We were very much advocates, ambassadors, even, even evangelists for the car. The community has changed. I mean, a lot of them abandoned the Roadster for a Model S when it came. When the Model S launched, the customers were afraid of what was going to happen to service for them because they weren't the priority anymore. They kind of got backburnered. Tesla kind of went from, this is our car, you know, we will take care of it, to, oh shit, we're making money for the first time on the Model S, uh, wait in line, to, yeah, we still care about you guys, to, Roadster, what? It always saddens us when we hear that one is wrecked. It's always kind of a moment of silence. The fire down in Arizona that destroyed like 30 of them. It was that guy's second fire. You realize that this species is endangered. We figure that there is probably 1,500 left worldwide. I would say probably 250 cars got totaled out just on poor estimates. I was in an accident, a really bad accident. It sheared off the whole front end of the car. And the insurance company and Tesla, of course, wanted to just say, no, you know, let it go because they didn't have the parts. They didn't have a way to fix it. And we were able to find Carl that could put it back together. How you been? Good. Long time to see. The word got out, there's people that are taking care of the Roadster again. It was a familiar face, you know, there's, People knew my dad, and they knew, you know, what kind of guy he was and, and what kind of service he provided. Always have a tool guy among your friends. The thing that really impressed me about Carl, the first time I brought it in for service, he just took care of everything. He didn't even need to be told what's wrong with the car. He just fixed it all. He detailed it. The level of customer service, it was above and beyond. He's a smart guy. He's found a niche where he's the best person in the world in doing this niche car and everybody loves him. My family is through and through motorheads. We love cars. My dad built cars. We built cars together. We've all built our own custom cars. We do just about uh, everything from body work, paint work, mechanical work, restoration work, electrical work. If you can crash it, there's a good chance that we can fix it. When Carl first left Tesla and opened up his own shop, it was big news. Most of the Tesla Roadster owners would continue a service or two with Tesla, and then it all started just moving over to Carl's shop. People just started sending us their cars from, from all over. All over the United States, Canada, we've got cars that are being put on containers coming over here from Europe and China. And I even traveled to uh, a car in Costa Rica. Uh, we're traveling to Australia. Just kind of exploded. We have now like 30 or 40 roadsters that we have, you know, at the facility right now. I'm in Texas. I've had two cars sent 2,000 miles to Washington State to get worked on by Carl because he, I trust him the most. He knows more about these cars than anyone else out there. Early on at Tesla is we got to work directly with the engineers who developed some of these systems. And so we got a knowledge that others didn't get. I actually helped write the shop manual for this car. And the reality is there are no diagnostics. Everything I do here is in my head. This is my nemesis right here. This car has a very abnormal problem where you can disconnect everything in the system and the water pump still runs. So it's got a wire shorted to power and I just haven't found it yet. In the meantime, it's just wiping the street with me and my pride. I saw him as this mechanic guy. 
he's an electrical engineer, it turns out. We've had a few Tesla service centers call us up that have never seen one of these things before. And uh, one of them actually said, look, we don't know anything about the Roadster, so we're just going to send it to you. This is the brains of the Tesla Roadster. It's the PEMP Power Electronics Module. It uh, handles all of the drive functions. These parts are incredibly hard to find, uh, and they're not easy to replicate. Uh, to make this board specifically to uh, reverse engineer is about 60 grand. These are Tesla Roadster battery sheets. So in a battery pack, you have 11 sheets. This is the inside of a sheet. Each one of these plates denotes uh, a series, so you got a positive and negative. There's little bond wires here, and it's what actually is what the voltage goes through. There's 6,831 cells in one of these batteries. Any one of them can short and cause a problem. You have to know how to find it. You would think that this toolbox would be full of tools. It is not. It's full of electronics. This is old tech when it comes to electric cars but it's still high tech for auto repair. Eventually this will be standard, but there's gonna be a lot fewer of them because electric cars break a lot less. The good news is nobody died and my car's worth more. The top's good. If I ever need a new top. So this one's totaled. I haven't told the owner yet, but there's a dent in the frame right there. And with that dent, they're gonna make me total it. Yeah, they will. This car just left here four months ago. It's a rough four months. Wow, that's frightening. But it's also encouraging that, you know, a wreck this bad is survivable if you're in a good car. Not so survivable. If you can save those, that's a miracle. Oh, you haven't seen this picture. Save all the green parts you can from, from my car in case I never need them. Were you really good at Legos when you were little? I was. <laughs> you know, people see crash cars. I don't see crash cars. I see opportunities. I see a $30,000 job there, another one here, and a parts right here to fix them. I like doing this. The minute the last car rolled off the assembly line, that was the end of the parts. I contact people all over the world. I find out where the wrecked ones were, their last home that they were at. Do you have any parts left over? I buy stuff every day from people who have bought these cars and have a little something on their shelf. I could buy a parts car, and I did, for five grand three years ago. I could buy a parts car for 10,000. I bought one for 15. And that, those were cars that were complete. Now I'm buying cars that are missing from the windshield forward for 40 grand. This car right here has been 767, was originally sold here in Seattle. I bought it at the auction for $43,000 for a parts car, which sounds crazy, but the battery's worth 25, the PEM's worth 10,000, all the suspension. This is a $4,000 trunk, $1,000 bumper, $2,000 trunk box. This car was coming to us from Georgia, and I know it looks like a pile of junk here, and it pretty much, for the most part, it is, but transmission, at least the case would be good. This board is still good. I've had five or six calls from these cars from the accident scene, and I tell them, pick up everything bigger than a quarter and throw in the front seat. Clip, a bolt, a screw, everything on this car is special. If I can just harvest one piece, I'll call it a success. These are our spare batteries. These are 1,000 pounds a piece. These are our hoods. We make a whole hood, including the frame. Those are the last 15 good headlights up there. Right side only. There are no left headlights available. I'm gonna take and cord every single thing I can get my hands on. It's the only way I can stay in business is to be able to fix the cars. To fill that need, we've built a lot of these carbon fiber parts. We make pretty much every piece of carbon fiber that goes on the car. We make all of these pieces that are on here, except for these. This is the factory Bilstein suspension. It's the last new set we know of in the world. We actually had custom suspension made for these cars. We had this grill made for the 2.5 cars because the plastic grills are obsolete. Oftentimes these cars, you know, he can make them a little bit faster, he can make them a little bit more reliable, he can make them last a little bit longer. Back when uh, Martin Eberhard was terminated from Tesla, these two tops were hanging on his wall. I'm going to give these back to Martin because he, he said he'd like to hang them on his wall. So I thought, you know what a nice gesture for the guy who created Tesla is give him back his parts. Why not? You know, this is a rare breed now. 
few more years, they'll start turning 20, you know, the age of a classic car, values are gonna go up. Um, but it really is the maintenance of a, of a species. The difficulty of buying a Roadster was overwhelming. For 2020 and most of 2021, the, the transactions were a listing that either got sold in, within an hour of being listed or a day. So the values now have gone from $40,000 two years ago to $150,000, $130,000, depending on the car that you have. Recently, one has sold for $182,000, another one sold for $190,000. We started seeing uh, that median price jump from $68,000 to I think about $112,000, $114,000. But with some really amazing examples of auction prices in the $200,000, $250,000 range, and, and that tells you when a car has really arrived. I mean, it's funny because it's what everybody was saying when the cars were new, that it will eventually become a collector car because if Tesla takes off, it's the first real electric vehicle and it's the first vehicle from a company that now obviously is really successful. For me, it was only a piece of the original Tesla journey was important, but also just the, the transition from EVs in general was important. People do look at them as investments, and the best part about it is they're fun. It's uh, You can't take your stock portfolio out for a drive, you can't take your Bitcoin out for a drive, but you can take the Tesla Roadster out for a drive. It's really cool, honestly, that so many people trust us with their cars and that we've kind of become this big roadster shop. Now he's in this big shop and you know he has parties. I remember last summer there were probably a hundred people here. People flew in from France just to come and see you know the largest collection of Tesla roadsters on the planet. I think somebody flew from Asia to come to it's like wow I just drove. <laughs> on the way over here today twice I looked in my rearview mirror and the person behind me is got their phone up taking a picture of my car. This car is special and it still looks special. People come up and say, well, that's a weird looking sports car. What is that? And they say, it's a Tesla. And they say, I've seen Teslas. They don't look like that. Is it their new sports car? It's like, no, no, it's, it was the first Tesla. You, you, you get all kinds of reactions from people. Um, what you don't get is I've never heard of Tesla anymore.